Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering fading text in and out on the screen based on the region that your player enters throughout your game world. As you can see, I'm already starting with a base project that's similar to our character controller tutorial. So if you need movement, be sure to watch that. The link will be in the description below. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button. And to go ahead and begin, we'll create a script and name it Fader. The first thing we're going to be doing in this script is adding a using for UI. So we'll go ahead and do that. It'll be unity engine dot UI. We can go ahead and add our variables. We're going to have three. The first one will be a public variable and it's going to be a text. And we're simply going to call it region name. This will be the text that we're going to have in the middle of our screen that will be fading in and out depending on where our player enters. The next two variables will be private and the first one will be a float. And we're simply going to call it fade time. We'll be using fade time to keep track of how long we want our text to display after it's faded in before it fades back out. Our next private variable is going to be a boolean. And we're going to call this one fading in. From here, we can go ahead and assign all of our variables in our start function. So the first thing we're going to do with our region name is we're going to go ahead and use a function that's given through Unity called crossfade alpha, which has three parameters. The first one is the desired alpha you want from the crossfade. The second one is the time you want it to take to get to that alpha. And the third one is a bool that says ignore time scale. Ignore time scale is important as it tells the game whether we want the fade to continue while it's paused. For this specific example, we don't so we'll end up putting false there. But if you wanted your pause menu to fade in or fade out, for example, you would put true in this case if you set your time scale to zero to pause your game. So for alpha, we're going to go ahead and have the default be zero as we don't want a text there in the beginning. And the duration, we're also going to put zero as I want this to happen right away. And then again, for the ignore time scale, we're going to go ahead and put false. Now we can go ahead and give defaults to our fade time and fading in. And for our fade time, we're gonna set it to zero in the beginning. And for our fading in, we're gonna set it to false. We're gonna go ahead and skip update and come back to that later. And we're gonna go ahead and create our fade in function. And the first thing we're gonna do in here is get our region name. And we're gonna do cross fade alpha. We want our desired alpha to be one. We want our duration to be 0.5, and we still want ignore time scale to be false. So we're gonna go ahead and take our fade time and do plus equals to our time dot delta time. And then we're gonna be creating an if statement that will be checking if our region name has fully faded in, as well as if it has been present for the amount of time we want it to be. So the way we'll do this is first by checking the region name's color dot alpha, and we'll see if it equals one. In other words, it's fully visible. And then we're gonna see if our fade time has reached the desired time, which I'm just gonna put at 1.5. And then if both of those cases are true, then we're gonna go ahead and say that we're no longer fading in and that our timer has reset. So again, our fade in function is saying that we wanna go ahead and crossfade our alpha up to one so it's fully visible. It has a timer that's being added to each frame, and then it has a check to see if we've reached full visibility as well as if it's been displayed for the wanted amount of time. And once it has, it goes ahead and says that we're no longer fading and to reset the time. So now that we've completed that, we can go back to our update function. And inside update, we're simply gonna check if we're currently fading in. And if we are, we're gonna call our fade in function. And then if we're not, we wanna create an else if that will be checking if our current alpha is not zero. And 
And the reason we're checking if it's not zero is because we want to call the crossfade function until it's no longer visible. But once it's no longer visible, we don't want to waste a call constantly calling the crossfade function. So that's why we're not just using a simple else to our fading in Boolean. So again, inside our else if, we're going to take our region name. We're going to crossfade it. We're going to have the desired alpha be zero. We're going to have the duration still be 0.5 and we'll still have the ignore time scale on false. Final thing that we need to do is an on trigger function. So that way we can go ahead and change the name and say that we want to begin fading it in. So we'll go ahead and do void on trigger enter. And we're doing 2D as our character is 2D in this case, but if you're doing a 3D game, you just leave the 2D off. And then we're doing a collider 2D and I'm going to call it other. Go ahead and scroll that down and then we're going to say if other dot tag and we're going to end up calling the tag region. Then what we want to do is say our fading in is true. And we want to go ahead and set our text string value to the name of the thing we just collided with. So what we're going to do is region name dot text equals other dot name. So to elaborate on this line of code, this is simply saying that the name of the object in the scene will be the string displayed on the screen. So you need to make sure that your region game objects names are the exact string that you want displayed on your region text. But that's all of the code, so you can go ahead and save and close it out. And then what we're gonna do is go over to our hierarchy and create some text. I'm gonna call this text region and it's already centered. I'm gonna make it a width of 400 with a height of 100. You can make this value whatever you want as this won't be displayed. I'm gonna make my font size 50. I'm gonna make my alignment centered and then I'm gonna make the color slightly darker. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and create some empty game objects. I'm gonna name this one West. That will be my first region. I'm going to set its position to 0, 0, 0 for now, and then I'll go over to the scene and just manually move it. I'm going to go ahead and add a collider, and I want to make sure that this is a trigger. And then I'm going to go up to tag and to add a tag, and I'm going to call this one region. And then we'll go back to our west and add that tag to it. We'll go ahead and go over to our scene and we'll just make it the size that we want. I'm going to make it 10 by 5 and then I'm just going to drag it to be over this way and then I'm going to copy paste it, switch the X to positive and name it East. One thing that's important to know about the box collider size is that you need it to be the size of the region. Since we have it on calling on enter, it'll only be called once. And while you're inside the region, it won't be called again. And when you exit the region, it won't be called then. If you just make it the doors to the region and you're able to go back out those doors, it'll call it whenever you enter that box collider again, instead of whenever it's the whole region, it'll only call it once unless you come back in later. So now what we're gonna do is go to our character and we're going to add our fader script. And then we'll go ahead and drag our text down into it. Also, as a side note, if you didn't follow our character controller tutorial, you need to make sure that you have a collider and a rigid body on your character in order for the on trigger enter function to work. So we can go ahead and test and play. And as you can see, when I enter the east, it fades in and then fades out. And if I go over to the west, it fades back in and fades back out. And like I said, while you're inside it, it doesn't pop back up. And once I exit and go back to the middle, it doesn't pop back up until I re-enter the other region. So as a quick recap, we used Unity's crossfade alpha function to fade in and out text on the screen based on the region the player has entered. This was done by using colliders and triggers to display the different game object names. And for those who may be confused slightly on the name, 
This up here is the game object name and where you want to put the name of your region. So be sure that the game object name is the exact name that you want displayed on the screen. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments or feel free to join our Discord and ask them there. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.